Hi everybody, welcome to TIA Now. I'm Clarence Reynolds. One of the key capabilities that will allow us to build flexible networks on top of a common physical infrastructure is network slicing. As 5G continues to take shape, network slicing will become a fundamental technology enabling a wide range of use cases. And joining us is Chris Bachelot, Director of Service Provider Cloud Solutions for Juniper Networks, and Angela Whiteford, VP Marketing and Product Management for Affirmed Networks. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Just to get started, Chris, what is network slicing? Just the basics of it. Well, yeah, you uh, alluded to it um, in your opening remarks, Clarence. So um, our view of network slicing is it's uh, taking a single physical uh, piece of networking infrastructure and being able to cost effectively deliver multiple logical networks over the same common physical infrastructure. And we call these logical networks slices. And now slices can be allocated to specific uh, use cases, like you can have a slice for IoT or, um, or uh, MVNO. Slices can be allocated to class of service, so you could have gold, silver, bronze slices. You can allocate slices to customers, like you can have a slice to, for specific MVNO operators, uh, for example. Or you can have, even have slices allocated to specific domains in the network, so wireless versus wireline, or consumer versus business uh, slices. And Angela, most people uh, have connected network slicing to 5G, but we're not completely in a 5G world. So what can network slicing do today? Yeah, it, well, I'm going to add on to what Chris said, right? And, and it answers your question as well. Absolutely, operators want to be doing network slicing right now on their 4G networks, and, and many of them are. The challenge is the way they're doing it is in a, in a very rudimentary way. There's a technique called using APNs to do network slicing today, and it's just very cumbersome. It takes it takes the need to touch different network elements in order to configure new APNs or quote configure new slices. However, the need to create customized services and deliver a service with very specific requirements to a given industry. So Chris was talking about the different examples, right? You could have an automotive slice, you could have a utility slice, um, you could have a healthcare slice. That is something operators want to do right now. It's all about growing the top line and slicing allows you to deliver those very customized services profitably. And now with the technology of virtualization, it makes it a lot easier to do that because you can spin up these logical networks very, very quickly. Are, are, the, are those the core reasons why network slicing has become so prevalent today is because of the customization? Customization and just top line revenue growth. They, everybody, are, all the mobile uh, major operators are on the search for how do they grow their top line. And you're right, customization is key to that. Absolutely uh, agree. Um, so it's about you know being able to deliver services that can be delivered today in a cost-effective way using current technologies. Um, so critical services like public safety, critical IoT functions in industrial medical applications, for example, that need um, higher levels of quality of service that can be delivered over traditional shared infrastructure. Uh, can take advantage of the concept of network slicing, uh, allowing you to deliver end-to-end -end policies. So performance policies, quality of service, jitter, um, latency, throughput, as well as security policies. And those policies exist on an end-to-end -end basis and allow service providers to deliver value-added services on top of that common physical infrastructure. Once again, cost-effectively, which is really important. You know, if you, if you think about it, <clears throat> What would an operator's dream be? They are seeing this huge, massive growth of data traffic coming across their network. Wouldn't they love to take that traffic and micro-segment it and charge differently for each of those segments, right? And then be able to, in terms of the cost to support that segment, they could adjust that. I mean, that all goes to profitability. And that's one of the things they're looking for is this, this idea of micro-segmentation uh, a number of operators have been talking about this as, is one of the key things they're looking for and slicing is going to be a key enabler for that. How are our uh, providers dealing with the need to build for some of the foreseeable use cases um, and balancing that with some of the creative unknowns that are coming down the pike and, and, and having the flexibility to pivot for those? 
So the, the answer to that question really lies in the, um, the heart of what Juniper is bringing to the, to the table for a network slicing solution, and that is our service provider cloud solution. So service providers um, are looking for the flexibility that SDN, NFE, orchestration, automation can provide to allow them to put services or functions anywhere in their network, in the data center, at the edge of the network, on customer prem, and when they need it, and be able to dynamically allocate functions where they need it in the network. So um, we may start off with services that are you know, requiring uh, centralized deployments, you know, network functions sitting in the data center, um, but those may evolve to uh, you know, services in the future, uh, like Angela mentioned, so automotive applications like uh, augmented reality um, that require very low latency applications dis distributed close to the end user. Um, and an ex example that's being uh, piloted by some of our customers is leveraging augmented reality for safety uh, um, applications in connected vehicle, which requires really low latency uh, turnaround time from sensors to vehicle to avoid certain uh, safety situations. So, you know, again, it's really important to have the flexibility to be able to adapt the network to changing needs uh, now and in the future. And I, I would add to that, <clears throat> that idea of flexibility, I think there's two key technologies that are really important for that. One is uh, virtual probes and analytics, and then the other one is automation. So you only know what you know, and then the analytics, right, the data is going to tell you what you don't know. And now for a, a given slice, you have the ability to gather real-time analytics to see, one, how's the network performing, create a potential baseline of performance for a given slice, right? So you can be proactive in anticipating problems, which customers love before the problem happens, but also take a look at what are the users doing? What, what's different going on in the network? And that gives you the ability to create new services. So then the next piece comes automation, which is the actual stitching together of those services. Now with slices, by nature of slicing, you're going to have more functions on the network, which means you're, kind of, you're creating complexity in the architecture. You need a very elegant and efficient way to actually stitch together the service, and that's where automation comes in. So, so picture this, that you have maybe a fixed wireless slice, the traffic is going up. I'm going to give you a very simple example. We, we benchmarked the performance. We know that we need to take an action and increase the performance by adding more capacity. And actually, you can do that all on a 4G network today, but it's that ability to use the analytics, use the automation to take a closed loop action. Mm. And are some of the hurdles that are ahead for network slicing more culture related or technologically related? From my experience, what I've seen, it's been more cultural and organizational. Uh, what I mentioned earlier in terms of <clears throat> how slicing is done today on networks, which is pretty rudimentary, the reason for that is the organizational issues. If you want to make a change, you have to touch different organizations. One organization might be running your DNS, the other might be running the HSS, and the other one's running the packet core. To actually create a new slice, you have to coordinate between all those different groups which is extremely painful, and hence why people aren't slicing. We can cut through that, and 5G is going to help us cut through that, but there's actually technology and capabilities now, there's new functions coming out, slicing functions, that create a centralized location where you can go in and actually configure slicing policies without touching those different organizations and elements, which makes it much easier to slice right now. Excellent. Well, Chris and Angela, thank you for being with us. And thank you for joining us as well. Uh, we'd like to hear your feedback, so reach out to us on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for watching.